Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you're calling in from around the world. This is Doug Brunke, founder and CEO of Global Chamber. We have a, a, a great conversation today about opportunities now and post COVID in the country of Peru. You know, it may seem sometimes that, you know, we should just kind of reel back on everything. However, there are opportunities in places all over the world. And there's certainly, uh, and our expectation is after all of this uh, COVID activity, that there likely will be a very sharp re return to where we were before. And so it's better to re-engage now on these opportunities. And so what we thought we would do today is share more about what's going on in Peru more holistically, but also some specific examples of how you can get involved in some projects and investments there in Peru. <clears throat> so our first speaker is Marianne uh, Gamara. She's the general manager of the Gembel Group. Um, Marianne is a consultant in legal, economic, engineering, and architectural issues related to foreign trade and port and airport infrastructure. She's got quite a view of what's going on in Peru. And so we're really honored and pleased to have you, Marianne, share more about like the country of Peru, what's going on, and maybe some things to think about going forward. So thank you for taking the time today. No, thank, thank you, Doug. And thank you, everybody. I think everybody is uh, doing good at home. And well, uh, I wish the best for everybody. So this weekend, we can um, have a better future. And I think, as everybody says, uh, from now, things are gonna be different. And in, for companies, this is not the exception. So in Peru, we have been having in the past few years, a really economy, we have a political, uh, some issues that made uh, some adjustments for political government. But however, in the, last, in the last year, in 2019, things were going well. Projects were, uh, infrastructure projects were, were going well, uh, as well as all investments. So I think for 2019, uh, there was a good, we had a good year uh, for terms of, of investments and projects. However, with this COVID and with this virus, Every th every everything stayed um, kind of asking what what are we gonna do about this crisis? So for 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 us, um, as you said, Doc, um, I I belong to a family business. I have a lot of companies, and we are struggle as well as many other companies of what are we gonna do because we are staying at home. Even though we are working we have at home, there's a lot of first people that has not that opportunity that works day by day. So we have to look at this, at this uh, crisis as an opportunity. So what we can do and what we can uh, share to other people uh, in, 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 do, in do better. So for Peru, um, I think there's a great opportunity and I think there has been a great measure that maybe Rafael will uh, talk about later about the legal and some measures that government has made. Here we have now, as everybody else, uh, quarantine since March 15th, and from now we will not be uh, be able to go out up to April 12th. This is what we have with the information. Maybe it will be longer, but this is the information that we have right now. So what we're doing right now is working at home. However, we are doing some projects here and we are also, they are also taking some tax uh, alternatives so companies cannot be, will not be uh, in risk also for flash, uh, cash flow. So I think Rafael will, will point this, uh, these measures that government has made, but I think there's a good, um, good measures and that will impact in the economy of the Peruvian, of Peruvian uh, companies. I think this is, uh, as I said before, for us will be like an opportunity to see what else we can do. Not also, but 
for example, in foreign trade, we have not uh, uh, we have not closed ports, and we have not closed uh, foreign trade commerce. So I think this is this is good. So we can control and we can assure that everybody has essential needs. So this this will be satisfied for everybody. Um, I think. I think that's the, the, the main thing that we have done in, in these past days. And maybe Rafael can, can, uh, can uh, detail some, some, some legal measures that government has made in these past days. Okay, that sounds good. Uh, before we switch over to Rafael, just a couple quick questions. And, and those of you on the line, uh, you can either ask a question in the chat room or the Q&A room or send an email to info at globalchamber.org. <clears throat> Excuse me. Marianne, the question that we have is, before all this happened, what were some of the hot things going on in Peru? What was, what was hot uh, in terms of uh, industries, opportunities, things that uh, you were working on, things that others were working on? And, and then um, kind of carrying it through, when, when would you expect some of that to recover? In terms of uh, before, I said in 2019, I think a lot of projects in infrastructure were being activated. Uh, for example, we are involved in foreign train. We have a logistic observatory that we are implementing. Uh, so this this is a, a project uh, that is uh, carried out by Minsetur. Minsetur is the Ministry of uh, Commerce, and they are very involved of having the all the information. So we can gather this information in one platform. This is one of the things we were doing as a company, but also uh, a lot of um, um, rail and uh, ports work also. So I think infrastructure was, was one of the opportunities, engineering was one of the opportunities that the Peruvian government was taking care of. And, and how about agriculture? That's an important export as well, isn't it? Agriculture has, a, has been going up. Uh, cranberries, for example, was one of the main, um, main uh, exports also to China. So, and also avocado was one of the main, I think we were raising on, 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 on the agriculture exports. Okay, yeah, absolutely. Um, are there some um, some things that are happening now, maybe on the healthcare front, uh, personal protection items and things like that, that that the country is able to to respond to, um, or or is it mainly an imported situation where you're getting help from from other countries? <laughs> Even though we're getting help, I think a government has 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 um, respond quickly to all this. What is happening? For example, here in Peru, we have um, we have uh, ability. Uh, we have um, habilitate some 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 spaces for people that are that had that has not home, and so where they can stay, and some other spaces that has been habilitated as as uh, hospitals. We are we can do not do as China that constructed a uh, hospital in 10 days, but we we try to do our best effort to to habilitate some some facilities for, for, for people that are now contaminated so they can they can do that. The health is I think is the most important is that do not collapse. So what we are doing is uh, control so we cannot go to that to that point. Okay, has Peru taken a little bit of a different um, approach on the border in and out? You know, in the case of Juliana, who we wanted to have here, she has been maneuvering over the last couple of weeks, and unfortunately, the only flight she could get to potentially then get back into Peru was right now. So that's why she's not here with us. So sad, sad that that happened. But it almost seemed in speaking with her that the border and flights in and out have been um, more restricted perhaps than other countries? How, how would you classify that? Yeah, 
uh, since March 15, I think the measures were very extremely, but I think were necessary. Since March 15, we had also uh, people cannot move from their homes, but also they had 48 hours where borders were cl uh, closed. No flights can be done in and out, uh, as well as territory uh, flights. The only thing that they didn't ensure was foreign freight, uh, but uh, cruises and flights were canceled uh, from, I think, March 16. And what the government is trying to do is bring in people that were abroad uh, on the world, trying to have humanitarian flights. But I think these were, uh, as I said, extreme measures that what had to be made. Uh, currently, we have not also the mobility of stay at home, but also we cannot as law, we cannot go out from our houses since 6 p.m. to uh, 5 a.m. So if you go from the streets from Peru, you can see military and, and police can stop you and ask you for your identification. And if you don't have the authorization because you don't work in a hospital or you don't work in a public service uh, uh, company, or in a financial company or as, as a bank, you cannot go out. And I think this is measures that we have to, to respect. And, and I think people, even though there are some exemptions in general terms, I think uh, our numbers can prove that we have been taking some, some, some measures about it. Got it. Um, and then finally, just a quick question, the Gambell Group, tell us more about what you've been involved with and then what are you involved with uh, at this moment with the Gambell Group? Thank you, Doc, for the, for the question. Uh, Gambell Group, as I said, is a family business. Uh, we do all about consultancy. Uh, we work in, with ports, uh, in some consultancy projects. Uh, we also do uh, engineering and architecture projects. We are now, as I said before, in projects related to uh, uh, logistic platforms. And um, we also have a company that sees all the accountability services. So, and we work uh, hand to hand with Rafael in the legal, in the legal department. They, they also give us some advice and we work together with that. So in, as company, uh, and we have also real estate uh, investments here in, here in Peru and in Miami as well. So what our, our, I think our first, um, uh, how do you say, I think this, this is gonna be an opportunity for us in, in cases of, well, we are not used to work at home, now we have to do that and we have to, to to see what we're going to do uh, from, from now on, I think we can, we can find some opportunities there. That sounds good. You're based in Lima, I believe, right? Um, uh, we're based in Lima, where we also have a, com uh, uh, a company or branch in Miami. Oh, great. We, okay. Yeah, and we work with a firm that is Samsung Prime, Hakamin and Gamara, that's a company in, that's located in Miami. So we are, there's a lot of people that uh, is in the United States that comes and invest here in Peru and vice versa. So we work with them. Fantastic. Well, thank you for sharing. Hold on. We'll have some questions for you, additional questions for you later on. We're now going to switch over to RPN. Uh, and Rafael has a couple of his uh, partners, Sylvia and Manuel as well. But Rafael, you're going to be presenting uh, more about um, the Peruvian Business Network. You're the CEO. Uh, you've got a legal background, and what's really outstanding about this organization is their connectivity to projects uh, all across Peru and beyond. And so Rafael will be explaining more about the kinds of projects they're involved with and how you can uh, tap in. So Rafael, thank you so much for sharing today. Thank you very much. Cesar, could you help me with the PowerPoint? Thank you very much. The next, please. Well, uh, good morning, uh, Doc. I really appreciate your kind invitation to participate in this event in order to present the International Business Network, which is an international organization that I lead. Therefore, uh, based on this, we can detect synergies between our network and the Global Chamber, and of course, your members. As you know, 
the International Business Network was born in Peru two years ago as a result of sharing with third parties reliable information on the supply and or demand of business opportunities located in our country. The next film, please. Cesar. We were able uh, to detect this information needed by some conversation held with various commercial officials of our country located abroad. They told us that it was very difficult for them to carry out their business promotion work because it was impossible to obtain information of business opportunity in our country due to the fact that this information was not duly, duly centralized by some public or private entity. In addition to this, there is always the fear that the information placed on this network is not reliable. In other words, they told us that even though this information exists in the market, it, it is disseminated through various actors such as chambers, unions, family offices, investment funds, law firms, and others, which make it very difficult to obtain. The next film, please. Given this situation, the law firm that I represent observed an opportunity to, to, that could be seized. At first, we aim to give reliable information of business, on business opportunity that we collected in Peru to these commercial offices. We didn't not intermediate nor commission it. We just wanted to help these commercial officers seeking the possibility that they could refer out our firm to foreign investor or entrepreneurs that could use this information. In that sense, the idea of creating a, new, a, a, of creating a network was born uh, at first as a branding and marketing tool for our law firm. This will bring us closer to Peruvian commercial officers that represent our country abroad with the purpose to generate pos possible clients such as potential investors or for foreign in entrepreneurs due, due to the direct recommendation of these officers. The next film, please. In order to arrange this, the supply and demand of business opportunity, at first, we proceed to collect this information for our clients. Afterwards, this information was incorporated into a database prepared by us and published on the internet, which we call the business opportunity platform, our first management tool. You can access to this tool by internet with www.rpn.p. We observed that this idea was very powerful, but that we needed to promote it, improve it, and feed it with more information. Therefore, we decided to expand, expand this universe by entering, entering cooperation agreement with institutions who might be interested in arranging this information and also advertise these opportunities to their members. Thus, we began to present the Peruvian Business Network, now RIM, as an strategic ally of the main chambers and association of our country. After they began to learn more about the idea, they began to enter cooperation agreement with the network forcing them to promote the opportunity within, within their members. This began to give a new weight to our venture because they appear as, uh, as our allies. We were endorsed by first-rate entities, which are, uh, which are widely recognized by the Peruvian business sector, giving international and extern internal and external assurance about the seriousness of our entity. The next, the next film, please. It's worth mentioning that nowadays we have more than 30 institutions as members or allies of our platform. Among them, Lima Chamber of Commerce, the National Society of Industries, Peruvian Tourist Chamber, the Family Business Association, the American Chamber of Commerce, the Chile Chamber of Commerce, the Spanish Chamber of Commerce, the Italian Chamber, the Chinese Chamber, 
among many others. The next, please. There is some part of our partners. Once this idea was institutionalized in Peru, seeing that some of the opportunity that came to our platform turned out to be interesting enough to help in this placement, we came up with the idea of expanding the core of the network, ceasing to be just an, informa an informational forum of Peruvian business opportunity to become or to become a business intermediator for those entrepreneurs who require it. In this sense, we facilitate the process of searching for interested parties in this business opportunity or in their business opportunities as long as they were focused on the next please business opportunities regarding a company buyout, the business opportunity regarding the sale of a company, business opportunity regarding obtain financing for companies, and business opportunity regarding the search for business partners. The next, please. Given that this job of prospecting, attracting business opportuni opportunities, reviewing them and place them required time and dedication on our part, time that we, did, we didn't we did not necessarily have since we were focused on the provision of legal services, we came up with the idea of starting to call businessmen or the di directors of companies that may be interested in participating with us in this work of prospecting and business intermediation. In this way, the second management tool of the network was born, the business broker partners. Nowadays, only in Peru, we have more than 40 business brokers, member of the RPM, whose purpose is to detect business opportunity by doing networking, then attract them to the network, verify their viability, and if so, carry out an intermediation and placement process through the network of all the other business broker, brokers. In case these opportunities are interesting enough, but they lack some important element, we also offer complementary services in order to improve the offer. This broker fellowship has certainly allowed them to create a parallel activity to their main activity supported in the exploitation of their personal networks. It has also allowed the international network to have more business opportunity for their, inter their intermediation, which are not only national, nationally, but also internationally, all through an arranged system of reconciliation and co-participation of potential commission that may be generated. The next please, film. Now the, the RPN has several mandate agreement for companies buyouts, companies set out, sell out, business finance, financing, and searching for business par partners. This business uh, portfolio border than $300 million. In most of these, uh, most of, of these opportunities uh, are in a placement phase. The next, please. The next. Given that uh, we have acquired know-how during these two years, and there was the need to expand its scope, we decided to replicate this idea abroad, either in a total way through members that replicate and use the management tool of the parent company, the RPN, or by allies, companies abroad that, the, that act as brokers of the international network, but under the direction of the parent company. The International Business Network, or the RIN, has presence now in 11 countries. Now is, we are in Peru, Spain, France, Chile, Colombia as members, and Mexico, Ecuador, China, India, Bolivia, Venezuela, and Argentina as allies. Finally, given the international connection generated a little over nine months ago, the RIM, RIM decided to once again expand its, expand its score, its scope this time, not only the, to the promotion of business opportunities, but now we have decided to promote trading opportunities. In other ways, 
we carry out commercial intermediation of international products, mostly commodities. The international network, therefore, is a relatively young institution that was born in Peru, and its purpose is to facilitate business opportunity worldwide, giving also service, services to improve these opportunities as intermediation services under an organization that have gained know-how over time. It is our intention to keep growing and involving in this venture new members and allies that could see this business network as an ideal, ideal way to generate more value in, this, in their business activity. In this sense, we extend our, extend our invitation to the Global Chamber and its association to join our organization. Finally, uh, I would like to introduce Manuel Origi. He's our director of, of our trading committee and Silvia Lama, our commercial manager, in order to explain more about the commercial activities of our, of our network mm -hmm. and also present part of our actual business <coughs> opportunity portfolio. Thank you very much. Manuel. Good morning, everyone. I am Silvia Lama, the commercial director. I am going to talk in general about the business opportunities and what we have actually in our portfolio. We currently have opportunities in different sectors, in our industrial, construction, mining, health, forestry, tourism, telecommunications, among others. Let me comment some of them. Uh, for example, in agro-industrial sector, we have an opportunity located 150 kilometers in the south of Lima. It is an agro-industrial company for sale that owns 375 hectares land where blueberries, tangerines, and pomegranates are planted. It has water and soil studies and four water reservoirs. The production area can be expanded and the price is $10 million and it has a uh, purchase facilities. Another opportunity is that in the telecommunication se sector, we have an opportunity from Bolivia. Uh, this is a company interested in finding a capitalist partner for a project to expand its fiber optic network. It is one of the main companies in Santa Cruz, Bolivia, and the requirement is $3 million. On the other hand, we have a construction company for sale that has more than 50 years of experience in the local market with ongoing projects and an important tax shield. The estimate price is $1.5 million. In the health sector, we have the sale of a company dedicated to the commercialization of medical devices with all the quality certifications, quite high profit margins are registered and it has no local competition. The value in this case is $8 million. In the tourism se sector, we have an hotel located in the main tourist area of Lima with established income, completely renovated and operating nowadays with an important uh, international prestige uh, and the uh, estimate price is $18 million. Um, all the opportunities have been previously evaluated by our committee made up of the team of business brokers specialized in the sector to validate the information provided. Likewise, we have financial documents, profit and loss statements, among others, that can be delivered once an NDA is signed with a company or a person concerned. Um, to finish, I want to current project, our, our current project portfolio is now in $140 million, and we can provide more information of our opportunities Winter. by mail. And I will gladly keep you informed of, of all of that. Thank you. Uh, hello. Uh, yes. Yes. Sorry, I, I thought it was a mute. 
Uh, my, name, my name is uh, Manuel Origi. I have uh, 25, more than 25 years in the international business uh, doing trade businesses. I am uh, president of the trading committee in RPN. Uh, as you should know, Peru's uh, exports uh, are mainly in the fields of uh, mining. We are one of the main uh, copper exporters together with, uh, with uh, uh, Chile. We are also big exporters of gold, uh, silver, and different mine, mine, uh, minerals. Uh, another of our main sectors is the fisher, fishing. We are exporting a lot of uh, uh, fish meal, fish products, and uh, seafood worldwide. Uh, another main uh, product that we're exporting is agricultural. We are exporting a lot of vegetables and fruits worldwide also. Uh, mangoes, avocado, uh, different products. And our, another, another of our uh, main items is the uh, textiles, mainly because of the cotton. So these four industries are our main exports from Peru. Okay, usually. Now, because of the situation uh, in Peru, of course, uh, we are, you know, in a difficult situation and uh, trying to find new opportunities as well. In RPN, what we are doing is not just exporting uh, the products from Peru and taking the opportunities from Peru, but also doing triangle business. So we are we can export Peruvian products using a trader in states for exporting to India, or we can uh, source some products from China uh, and trading from Peru to Chile or doing different kind of products. For example, we are now doing some gold business. Uh, we are now having an opportunity to sell uh, uh, boats from Peru. We are now doing some minerals like manganese, for example. We are doing iron for exporting, uh, for making the steel. Uh, we are doing some uh, uh, juice, jewelry. We have uh, opportunities on copper, uh, cathodes, for example. We are, we are also now offering this uh, or Getting, we have an inquiry from cathodes, so we are looking in Peru, we are looking in Chile. So we have uh, many different opportunities coming from our brokers and coming from abroad. So uh, that's uh, one of our main strengths, strengths in uh, our committee, in the trading committee. That sounds good. So that kind of relates to something um, that I believe Raphael mentioned. Raphael, you said that you've historically handled business opportunities, but then you talked about adding trade opportunities. Is that, is that uh, what Manuel, you have been chatting about in terms of some of these three-way opportunities and things like that? Tell us, tell us more about the difference between a business opportunity and a trade opportunity. Uh, sorry, either either Manuel or Rafael, whichever. Okay. Okay, let me explain. Uh, there is one is uh, business opportunities means that, uh, for example, there is a company that uh, they are looking for financing. So our job there is to find the financing for uh, for invest or for investing in their company, financing or investment in different companies, doing both both sides looking for investors or looking for a company that uh, is willing to find new investors or willing to sell the 100% of the company or maybe selling some share. So that's a business opportunity in the market. So as Silvia explained, we have many different kind of companies like telecommunication companies that uh, they are looking for financing or looking for investors. Uh, or also we have some companies from abroad that they are looking for investing in mining, for example, in Peru. So our job is to find also the mining companies that are willing to, uh, or looking for an investment or willing to share or getting some financing. That is uh, what we call business opportunities. And the trading business is the trade of the products, right? So we have 
opportunity to sell, let's say, a copper, 10,000 metric tons per month of copper. So our job is to find also the potential customers abroad, international customers that are looking for the copper, let's say China or States or Europe, for example. So that's the difference between both uh, uh, activities that we have, two main I see. That, that makes sense. So when Sylvia talked about the projects totaling $114 million, uh, first of all, I think it's probably U.S. dollars. Um, and yeah. then secondly, is that the total number of, uh, of the, 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 by totaling up all of the companies, one might be worth $3 million, a project might be worth $5 million. Adding all of those up, it's it's 114 million. Is that is that how that number comes about? Uh, and so that question is primarily to maybe to Sylvia. Are you are you I, muted? I think she's mute. Yeah. Oh. Sorry. Yes, it's in dollars uh, to the first question, and the second one is the sum of all the opportunities, correct? Is the, the telecommunication plus energy plus mining plus forest? I see. Okay, that, that makes sense. <coughs> we have uh, more questions about uh, no, wanting to know more about opportunities in IT, like through applications and also uh, eco-friendly construction materials and renewable energy products. Do you, do you have projects in those areas? Yes, actually we have an opportunity in technology and energy, both of, of them. First, uh, in the technology, we have a IT Mexican company for sale. It's an opportunity to, to to software factory and generate concept called staffing. And in the case of the energy, is a company specialized in equipment and projects of photovoltaic, photovoltaic um, and solar energy to be executed. This is a, a program and we have to, this, this opportunity, you know? Okay. Um, along the way, um, I think it might have been you, Sylvia, who mentioned, or might have been um, uh, Manuel, actually, that mentioned Bolivia. So, so the projects that you have are primarily in Peru, but there are some in other countries as well. What's the, what's the typical distribution? Yes, we have uh, some opportunities uh, on Bolivia, Chile, Mexico, uh, but we have no problem because the ring is uh, the RPN of ours in, the, in the, those countries. We proceed to collect the information for, for our clients and this information is validated. We ask who they are, what they do, and we ask the reason of, of the opportunities and then we collocate these, these opportunities in our portfolio. I see. So kind of continuing that, there, were, there was a picture there of I think about 40 brokers that you have. Mm -hmm. you know, first, first of all, yeah. it, was, it was a little stunning. Juliana is the only woman. So maybe I think <laughs> that that industry and brokering is, is fairly male dominated everywhere. Uh, uh, so, that, <laughs> so, but I, you probably should just make sure that everybody understands you're also looking for women as well. And it's one reason why we are sad that Juliana can't be with us today and very happy, Sylvia, that, that you can. So those brokers, are they all in Peru? Are they distributed in other countries? What's the distribution there? Yes, well, uh, the 40 brokers are in Peru. But okay. some of days are in Spain, France, Chile, Colombia, Ecuador, China, India, Bolivia, and Venezuela. Uh, we have uh, some meetings once in a week to expose and promote the opportunities. And that's the way we are working. Okay. 
is the intent then like let's say the the broker that's in Venezuela would that that broker be looking for opportunities there and then upload or help mm -hmm. to upload into the system so that other people can see it and be able to participate yes uh, these people in, in in these countries are they have their their brokers their red their connections different as Peru. I see. Okay. Yeah, and so it's, for uh, the, the, oh, go ahead. Yeah, just a second. Uh, each country have their own network. Like RPN is Red Peruana de Negocios. It's a business network from Peru. Each country has their own network. That's why we are stronger and stronger. Uh, but at the same time, all of them they are, how to say, unified, or we are in contact, as Silvia mentioned, there is a, a, a meeting every week for uh, evaluating and discussing about the opportunities in every country. Okay, but uh, still, in, in our case, we're from Peru, however, we have opportunities from different countries, not just from Peru, but from, from many countries. Okay. okay, so if there's someone listening in from Amsterdam or Tokyo or New York City, um, and they're potentially interested in some of these types of projects, how would they get involved? What's the process to learn more? If there is, a ch if there is an opportunity from uh, any country, let's say, for example, uh, I am a broker, and uh, because of my personal business, my own life, business life, I have a contact with uh, uh, a company in New York, as you mentioned. And I, hear, and I hear that they are looking for some investment. So I bring this to RPN. RPN. Okay. So that's the, the, the big potential of the brokers because every broker is a professional. Most of us, we are our uh, own uh, company owner or directors or managers. So, so uh, in our personal and professional life, we have many opportunities to know different companies. Uh, okay. and, and different opportunities. So for everybody, it's, uh, uh, it's an opportunity to bring those, those uh, chances to the RPN and be able to develop new business besides our personal business. I see. So if we have a member in New York, let's continue with that example, and they're interested, then, um, but they don't know any of you oh, in terms of the brokers, is it then the way in is for us to introduce them to you or to Juliana or to one of the other brokers. Is that how it works? And then you take it from there? Yes. Yeah. That, that would be perfect. Yes. Okay. Uh, actually, we did some, um, we tried to do a business with Juliana uh, uh, already. Uh, and she introduced uh, a guy from, from, I think, what, from Global Chamber also. And we were discussing. Nothing happened uh, at that time. But uh, there, there are many, many chances in that way. Following the example of New York, it is like that. If uh, you can bring this, uh, this guy and uh, he has some uh, opportunities on business that he wants to develop or has something that we, he can offer, or he knows a contact or a company that wants to invest, let's say, just to make him some, some examples. Yes, of course, we can attend them uh, 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 and, and we can start discussing from that point. I see. Okay. Is uh, RPN, RIN, are they looking for more brokers? And, and if so, where? Yes. Uh, as RIN, we are always looking for uh, new members or, or new places that we can develop business. In Peru, uh, our maximum or our limit is to reach no more than 50 brokers. But, uh, uh, but uh, by brokers, we mean really people that is uh, really uh, involved in business, that is uh, uh, really has each one we have to have a good network, right, to, 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 to make uh, the RPN bigger in business, right? Uh, but we are always looking for new opportunities and, uh, in different cities, in different countries. So, uh, yes. For your for answering your question is yes we are looking for new opportunities new people new brokers abroad. 
actually okay. our intentions is to expand the uh, the RPN in every country that at uh, this time we don't have any presence with 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 members. No, we are looking for members and aliens company uh, dedicated in legal affairs, law firms, trading companies, or companies dedicated to give assistance to financial that can be our partners. I see. Okay, you know, that, that makes sense. And so when you say partners, are you talking about uh, brokers? Oh, are you, you may be on mute. Uh, Sylvia. Uh, it could be a broker uh -huh. or also members or allies of our uh, international network. Okay, so um, what what does being a member mean? Um, the broker, I presume there's a special uh, requirements regarding what they have to be able to do and from a security standpoint, uh, a member, quote unquote, a member, what, what does that mean within your context? The member is, is an administrator, administrator of the, 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 the uh, network in some country, in any country. We have only one member in a country. And uh, the member oh. have the, uh, the same stru structure of the RPN. They have their own, own uh, broker, their own business portfolio in, uh, in between others. The, the allies, on the other hand, are as a, as a kind of broker that act, act in another country, different from Peru. Okay, so going back to the example of the New York company that's maybe interested in some sort of opportunity, what is that person? What, what, how, do you, how do you name that person? They're not a broker, they're not a member, they're what? Uh, it could be convert it in a broker or uh, or in a member, but first of all, it could be a, a simple agent that uh, uh, that have a um, first relation with the uh, with the RIM. Then he could convert in a broker or in a member uh, of our of our network. What if it's just a company that says, hey, I'm interested in that project, I want to buy in? What are they, do you call them an investor or do they need, how do they, it's still not quite clear how they get connected. I presume that they get invited, let's say we introduce them to Juliana and then she works through, you know, the information for them. And then, so what does Juliana call that person? That that person is an investor for a project? Sylvia, could you answer this question, please? So, so I, you've explained member, one per country. You've explained brokers. So what about the people that are actually investing? So somebody's interested in a $3 million project in Peru and they're sitting in New York and they're not affiliated with RPN now. I presume we would introduce them to uh, Manuel or to, uh, mm -hmm. to uh, Juliana. And then there would be a conversation. Um, mm -hmm. What does Juliana or Manuel call that person? Are they an investor or what, what's the relationship? If he wants to invest, it's an investor. It's a customer, actually. Okay, a customer. Okay. It's, it's a customer, yes. And okay. for us, it's a client. Mm -hmm. Got yeah. it. Okay, us, when client. you say mm -hmm. us, uh, you mean RIN or your own firm? RIN. RIN, okay. Very good. Um, I, th I think I've, I've got that. So, um, so the way people tap into these opportunities, um, is there a place online where they can go look and see what's there or do they need to contact one of you first to, to see those? They can enter into our web, web page so they can know more, of course, about RPN and RIN. Uh, and after that, uh, it would be great if uh, he can contact so we can make a, an explanation of what we're doing and we can together find some opportunities. Okay, got it. So you can go to the web and what's the, what's the website that they should be going to? 
Silvia, is RPN or RIN? RPN. Okay. RPN, right? RPN. So, so what's what's the actual website? Is it rpn.com? Dot P. RPN dot P E. Mm -hmm. RPN dot P E. So uh, if you're interested in learning more about that, go to RPN dot P E. And, um, and I presume that there's not just information, but there's also ways to connect up in. And uh, the other way would be just let us know that you're interested in more and we'll connect you in as well. Um, uh, what's, um, in terms of the, the rest of 2020, in terms of where you see this going, what, um, obviously this is a very unprecedented time in human history. Are you imagining that, um, that the distribution or the opportunities may change significantly for the rest of the year? Or do you expect things perhaps just to get back to normal at some point in three to six or nine months? In my opinion, uh, things will change. Uh, in some cases, uh, will be will be tougher for some business. But also, I think this will create new opportunities for other business uh, or other sectors also. Uh, for, for sure, in the case of health and medical, as well as uh, uh, food, the opportunities will come a lot. You know? I think they, there will be a lot of opportunities. Uh, in the case of uh, mining, for example, I think uh, that uh, they will return <clears throat> to normal or even, <clears throat> even grow in some cases. And the mining in our countries is um, one of the main industries that need to return in order to uh, restart our growing as a country. Because if one of the main uh, topics or, or even it is the first uh, industry in, in Peru and, and, and our countries. So for sure it will be one of the, the industries that will return. And also China is uh, recovering little by little and our main products, our main uh, mining products go to China. So I think there are some industries that will not just return, but they can appear in new opportunities for this year. Okay. That sounds good. Uh, some, some more questions that have come in are asking about uh, the opportunities for industry auditors and inspection companies. Are there opportunities there on those? And also food and beverage import, is there um, opportunities there as well? Mm -hmm. Yes. Not just import, but also export from Peru. Okay. Mm -hmm. Got it. How about the industry auditor and inspection companies? Is that, that's a very specific question, but uh, any, anything that comes to mind there? Uh, well, for, uh, mainly for exports, for example, in mining, we are using a lot of, uh, you know, SGS, inspector, inspectorate, these uh, specialized companies for inspection, and we'll keep using them for sure. Okay, got it. But I, I don't know if uh, for inspection will be growing. I'm not sure of that. I don't think so. But uh, still, we need the inspection companies. Sure. Mm -hmm. We're just about at the end of the time, so I'd like to circle back with Marianne. Marianne, I think you're still there. Are there is there anything else that this conversation has uh, inspired or other thoughts that you have? Any other things that you'd like to say in, in wrapping up? Uh, well, no, thank you, everybody. Um, I think this is, a, as I said before, a big opportunity for us to think about what we were doing and what we're going to do from now on. In Peru, I, as I said before, I think uh, for, econo for companies, they are trying to make some adjustments and uh, some measures that will make companies to to breathe and to have cash flow uh, with the tax administrations, economic help. So I think for companies that now are in Peru, there's a good opportunity and for invest investors as well, there's gonna be a good opportunity. So no, just to, to, to invite you and thank you all and just to, to thank, give all your, the best, the best for everybody. Okay. Thank, thank you, Marianne uh, of the Gambell Group. And then in terms of uh, the, the rest of you, uh, Manuel, Silvia, or Raphael, anything else you'd like to say in wrapping up uh, so that people are, are, are clearly aware of 
what these opportunities are and where they need to go next? In my case, it's just uh, thank you very much for your time. Uh, I think we have good opportunities and uh, we have to keep moving the economy. So we have to be more creat creative, uh, creative uh, uh, these days uh, and, and to find new opportunities, new business, new chances. So uh, thank you for your time and keep safe and let's uh, move the economy. Creativity and flexibility, uh, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. uh, any other comments? Otherwise, otherwise we'll wrap it up here. Thank, thank you, everybody, for taking the time today. No, 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 to, thank you. Oh, thank you very Raphael? much, uh, Do, for, for, Yes. Thank you very much, uh, Do, for for the time that you give us. And uh, also, we, we would like to extend uh, one more time our invitation to Global Chamber and its uh, members to join our organization. Thank you very much. Great. Thank, thank, you. thank you, Raphael. So the Global Chamber and, and uh, RPN are, are collaborators. Thank right? you. We're already, we're already members in each other. So in terms of our members, uh, we've, we've been aware of their activities. And so uh, we encourage you to learn more um, and be connected in. And sorry, Sylvia, I think I might have overspoken you. Uh, did you? Are you there, Sylvia? Sylvia? Oh. Sorry about that. I, I have I, connection problems. Sorry, sorry. Can you repeat, <laughs> please? No, I, I thought I, I heard you say something, but uh, uh, anything anything in wrap up? Not at all. Thank you very much. Um, nice to okay. see you. Uh, uh, no, I want to thank, I, I really appreciate this kind of invitation. And, we want to expand the, the RPN and we are in, in touch for every, everything you, you want to ask. Um, no more, that's all. Okay, very good. The Global Chamber, you know, we spend our days making connections between our members so that they can be more successful and it's never been more important than now to, to have trusted connections and to, to, to talk with people about not only the, the businesses you've had, but also things maybe that you're thinking about pivoting to. And so you know, connect in um, to us at headquarters at Global Chamber, and we're happy to connect you in, in all sorts of ways. Uh, we also do Globinars. So we do these virtual events uh, all the time. Uh, this one on Peru today. We have one tomorrow on artificial intelligence and using it to determine which companies will survive and which will not. Uh, there are ways to do that. And so the topic tomorrow is that. And then on Friday, we're talking about hot opportunities around the world. So we have a variety of speakers talking about, you know, things that are going on where you might want to be able to jump in. Next week, we have multiple other Globinars as well. This week, I think we had 12 uh, overall. Uh, so our goal is to make sure that our members are connected up with a variety of uh, people uh, and opportunities so that uh, you can make it through this challenging time. And then as soon as uh, these challenging times are over, hopefully sooner than later, uh, you can continue to grow your business. Thanks again for everybody for be speaking today. And thanks from around the world or to around the world for all of you who have attended today. Thanks, everybody. Thank you very much. Thanks. Bye-bye.